Hello everybody. What I've got here is an entry for journal number one written by my test student, otherwise written by me, but I tried to not write it like a teacher and write it like a student. And the point of this is to show you what I'm looking for uh, in the rubric that I have included at the bottom of your documents. I just copy pasted it. And you all know that that rubric um, is also available to you. If you go into the classwork uh, part of the on resources, um, the rubric is also right there available for you. Number one, uh, give a title for your work and try to indicate uh, the module or the parts of other modules because sometimes they might overlap. Uh, also, always use the uh, New Times Roman font size 12 and double space your text. So what I didn't do here is I didn't add the word count, which would have been interesting. So let me do Control A, uh, select my text and go into, and you all know this, tools and word count and see what do I have. Okay, so, you know, I'm thinking that somewhere between uh, 350 and 5 is probably um, a good number um, for um, your writing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read paragraph by paragraph and then I'm going to look at the comments so that you can understand what it is that I'm looking for. So in the voice of the student, more than anything else in this first module, I'm excited about learning about the brain. Sandra Chapman's TED talk about turbocharging your brain was an unexpected eye-opener because it contradicted what we all intuitively think about working efficiently. Multitasking is to be avoided at all costs because it degrades mental systems and unitasking helps us learn important tools of focus and attention. In brackets, anything that degrades my brain is something I'm going to avoid, close brackets. The teacher's sample notes on this module included the idea of learning how to filter information. This makes sense to me in an age where most of the world's knowledge, but not the wisdom because these two things are different, is available through a keyboard and a search engine. So it turns out that knowing what not to pay attention to is the key. So I'm going to click on each one of these. So the first one is when you're referring to an author, always use their full name. Some students I see use a first name. You never do that. And it's best to use uh, both names and refer to either the article or the title of the video. Um, the next thing I want to point out here is I'm just showing you that this sentence here is an example of the student showing me that they're understanding. So the reflection criteria is uh, you can either question or you can analyze or you can um, apply the uh, or evaluate the concepts. But basically what you're doing is that you're you're showing me what you've learned. And this student has learned that multitasking degrades mental systems. Now, I could have gone into a little bit more uh, information. For example, I could have included uh, the increased blood flow in the uh, prefrontal cortex when we learn how to unitask and all that stuff. And that would have been excellent. But I just wanted to get this done quickly. This, this sentence here, anything that degrades my brain, that's making it personal and that's always good. Uh, this one here, teacher sample notes, learning how to filter. So this shows me that the student saw the sample notes that I uh, made available to them. So uh, that's really good. That's an extra step. And it's also showing me that the student understands that Unitasking is actually learning how to filter out what you don't need to pay attention to. And this conclusion down here, now this is this is learning because um, it's one thing to know that multitasking is bad for your brain, but it's another thing to come to the conclusion that knowing what not to pay attention to is the secret ingredient. So this is both R and C. Next paragraph, I think this idea of filtering information so we can help our brains learn how to multitask, how to, sorry, how to unitask is actually revolutionary. Advertisements are everywhere, bleeping, pulsing, singing, and competing for my attention. It's overwhelming and it makes me feel dizzy sometimes. That's content I want to filter out. Learning how to filter is actually learning how to focus and everyone can use more of that, exclamation mark. Ms. Chapman said, and here you see, I should have put Sandra Chapman, 
or that would, this is not wrong, but it would have been best to put Sandra Chapman, said that we work in three minute uninterrupted segments because of the disruption and our poor focusing abilities. I can imagine how companies would want to maximize their employees ability to focus. Okay, and this is a grammatical error here because um, I'm forgetting here their, their employees. So guys, this needs to be plural. And I need to have a um, an apostrophe. So an employee, employee, make it pearl and put the apostrophe to show that it's about the ability. So I wouldn't get full marks for my writing. Maximize your employee's ability to focus, detox, distraction, and get more than three minutes of work done at a time. And here I would say go easy on the uh, exclamation marks. So this is an example, this sentence here learning how to focus of both showing that you know and you understand and also uh, connecting it here because now you're taking this idea of imagining a world where we can work more than three uninterrupted minutes and wouldn't companies really want to know how to do that so employees could be uh, productive and efficient so i'm getting a blue line pay attention to your squiggly lines consider changing to you see i was right it is a 2e thing all right, um, I should never see any blue squiggly lines, people, in your documents when you submit them to me. So last paragraph, why are we all so resistant to focusing? Why do we all feel the need to be distracted, either by our phones, televisions, or whatever else we use as a distraction? Um, before I continue here, I was playing with the idea of adding um, addiction and uh, alcohol and... Um, marijuana as a, an example of distraction because they certainly are what are we afraid to feel realize or know if we pay more than three minutes attention maybe we would actually have an experience of feeling ourselves getting in touch with what's actually going on in our hearts and our minds maybe that's why we love the distraction so much it keeps us from seeing who we really are on the inside or not feeling what we are afraid to feel and think all right, so this entire last paragraph here is taking the big ideas of what it is that this student has learned in this module um, and applying it um, not so much in a personal, like this student's life example, although you could have done that, but more like applying it to what's going on in the world and um, it's almost like a sort of a philosophical or a psychological musings here on why do we not enjoy slowing down and focusing? Are we running away from paying attention on uh, the inside? So this whole section here is about a C. So I hope that uh, this gives you a little bit more information about what these criteria mean. And... Um, you know, another connection that you could have made is uh, maybe to a character in a novel who uh, was an example of being able to be so still and quiet in the moment and so focused, or maybe something that you know from world religions and philosophy, because when I was writing this paragraph, I was thinking of Buddhism and the Buddha or whatever. So, um you know, the, the, the first part, the R is showing me that you're able to analyze, question, uh, and understand the content. And the C is making connections between the ideas in R and where you see it applying to you or uh, in society or in literature at large. I hope that helps, folks.